the one thing we do need to mention is Max Jowett. As we talked about Amazing. him last week and possibly going to be the first person in the history of the sport to score 500 points in the season. And if you just sit back and think about how hard it is to do that in the fewer number of games than historic no, figures Yorkshire Cup. that have gone no. before him, it's, a, it's an astonishing achievement. No Regal Trophy, no games against West Wales. He didn't play against Newcastle. I don't think he did anyway, because Mason Leno did all the kicking. points in a season. It's incredible. And then he went off injured. So it's a good job he got them in the yeah. first half, isn't it? Although, do you remember Gill, we could have kicked it, because you know, he's the world's yes. greatest goal kicker now. Yes, the last act on the yeah. field. He was the Paul Anderson-esque. Yeah. Just give me the ball on the touchline. Thank you very much. Good night. 500 points. 500 points. Is and again, it's one, of those, it's one of those strange things where it's a record where you never would have thought about it until in the last few weeks... No, because I mean, Trinity Heritage have been keeping tabs on it. And again, I, I grew up in an era where there was only three television channels, clearly. So things like record books, we, we used to read them. You know, it was quite... So names got etched into how important they were in history because you never thought their records would ever be beaten. So, you know, the likes of Jim Sullivan, you got to know them because, you know, Brian Bevan and Neil Fox, because their feats, whether you supported the team or not, were never going to be surpassed. And the one that remains, that wasn't in, um, in well, obviously Bevan's will and will forever, but the one that you thought, again, that sits alongside those, that will yeah. never be beaten, was Lewis Jones's just short of 500 points in the season. Um, and to see that go this weekend is a massive testament to Max Jowett. What about Great Britain caps? See, now that's been buggered up, hasn't it? Because there are there are players with golden caps who played for England. So Adrian Molly's got one, hasn't he? Yes. And I'm James sh- Graham. There you go. Professional wrestling is James Graham and Adrian Molly from professional wrestling against uh, the Australians that time. But, yeah, so it, it, amazing achievement. And, and, and uh, I, I, I do tend to think people slag off the achievement because they just slag off everything, everything that happens these days. It's It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's a, it's a mark and measure of consistency that is, well, it's the best of its kind. So one may come along and break it one day. He may even get in the Hall of Fame one day. Yeah. Seven Which, more I inductions mean, tomorrow. In you, the think, Hall of Fame. you think he'd end up in, possibly end up in Wakefields eventually. Yeah. Um, I think Matty Ashurst will, because yeah. I think if you look at people who are already in there, he's achieved more than some of them. Um, and he's What's the kind the of player. at Wakefield? Do you I have to be retired for five? I don't know. Uh, but it could be like we're going to just break it just for the fun of it. Um, well, we've got no four reason. men, two women, and a team going into the RFL mm. Hall of Fame tomorrow evening in Wigan. This was something I was. Uh, did, I, did I bring this up a few weeks ago? About I haven't. Right, so I'll, I'll bring it up in a minute. It, it we should make more of the Hall of Fame than we do, don't mm. we? There's no TV coverage of it. There's no. no. <coughs> I don't. <think, coughs> excuse me. Not that it's something you could necessarily live stream or whatever, like the awards, but. Is there going to be a video afterwards of here's all the people making their speeches? Is there? I don't know. It sh- there should be. There should be. Because um, it is the pinnacle of the... You can't get higher than being in the Hall no. of Fame unless you're Australian and you've got the Immortals. But in in Britain, you can't get higher than being inducted in. And the wh- Hall of Fame. whilst I do think there is an expense attached to having a formal dinner, I still think that's better than... Oh, come along, because at the end of this game, we're going to induct someone into the Hall of Fame, or um, it has been decided that so-and-so is now in the Hall of Fame. You go, right. Well, it should be a premium event, shouldn't it? Yeah. It is a... It is a and, and, a, and I think it will be prestigious tomorrow mm. night, but we don't do it annually, do we? It's not like the Dally Ends. It's very so, ad hoc. And all of a sudden, we've gone from nothing for two or three years to now having seven. And you're like, it's a dinner. It's great to celebrate these people, but... Do we do it regularly enough to make it well, as prestigious as it needs to be? Then you get the question, and I know at Leeds you do it differently where you induct people from each era, don't you? So, you've got so we that. can tell the story. There'll be people that go in tomorrow and so say, well, why, why aren't they in already? Because they retired 700 years ago or whatever. So it's, well, it's there are two kind of historical thing. figures and two modern-day figures in the men's. Obviously, the women's game... They're going to be modern. Well, modern and historical at the same time. 
and the team, <laughs> which again, it's an interesting mm. debate about putting a team in, about how you can compare eras and what constitutes a, a, a great team, a legacy team, if you like. But again, that's a women's team. It's not secret. They've, they've put it yeah. out. We're not, we're not breaking uh, any confidence. Right, but it's the women's 1996 World Cup winning team that went to Australia and paid their own fare and never quite got the recognition they deserved. So, you know, that's a, it's a great story. So how, that, how would you compare that to Doddersfield team of all talents from before the that won all four cups war? before all four cups was them them four, these four, four cups. yeah, yeah so. but well this is I think now is that is is now you've opened the floodgates so mm-hmm. who's the next team to go do you just induct one team at a time or two or whatever and what makes a what is what's the specific thing well the, is it a season have, is, it, is it like Leeds where well, it was a decade it's interesting of, because having been party to some of these discussions for which I'm extremely grateful to have been asked. The first team to be discussed was that great Wigan team of the late 80s to the mid-90s. And the issue then became, it's not a team. Because if they were constantly buying players who were the (laughs) best and getting the best out of them, but at what point was that a team? It was a club that had a huge amount of success. But which year would you, you know, you might say, well, 1994, because that was the year they went to Brisbane and won the World Club Challenge and, you know, um, that team also won the Championship and the Challenge Cup. But it's very hard to inaugurate a team when personnel change. A touring team is different. You, yeah. you pick your, however many it is, 20, 22, 24 players and they are the ones that constitute that team for that six weeks where they go on tour, and they come back and win the World Cup. It's hard to argue that they're not worthy of a team that gets inducted into Hall of Fame. So you'd assume at some point the the 72 World Cup winning squad would go in, or the 50, whatever it was. Again, discussed briefly. Um, Part of the issue with... Some of the World Cup squads is the World Cup wasn't the event that it, you know, <laughs> well, in, yeah, yeah. You, know, <laughs> you go on an Ashes tour, you come back. It's like 1954 is a classic example. The first ever World Cup won by Great Britain in France, yeah. an amazing achievement. But not all the players who were great players at the time made themselves available for this new concept called the World Cup. So, does that in some way? devalue the achievement probably not the players that played in it deserve to be to be fated so I, I think there'll be some great debate it's just whether teams should be admitted into Hall of Fames or not I think there's a good argument for it mm. and I think it, again it makes us innovative because yeah. nobody else does that Wigan 94 has got Craig Murdoch in because that's why I was just checking there so right. we like Craig Murdoch so yeah. we put him in yeah. I was looking at 95 but that's when they didn't win the Challenge Cup was it so Nigel Wright's in that one so again I mean, but he, but he it's, can't it's feel it difficult isn't it to oh, say yeah. What what is the what, what is, is what's what, peak leads? What is peak leads in this last twenty years? Then well, again, is it a team that comes from fifth, or are we saying that that achievement is slightly less than a team that was league leader shield winners because they had that level of consistency throughout an entire year, uh, or is it the brilliant ability to peak at the end of the season when you haven't been the best team? So like twenty seventeen, where everything somehow yeah, felt or is it two thousand and nine where? You know, they've won it three years on the trot, or is it 2015 when they win the treble? Probably 2015. Stop me if I've said this before, because I can't remember if I have or not. In the UFC Hall of Fame, they induct matches, so an actual right. an actual match Again. between two fighters. So if we inducted, if we had a Hall of Fame, so the Challenge Cup games, final between nine, in 1985 between Hull and Wigan, that would be a Hall of Fame goes, level. That, that's a game that whereas, from minute one to minute. 80 this was this was the best of rugby league. yeah if it was a film it would get five stars seven in the tokyo Dome. but if it but say st helens bradford wide to west is not in the hall of fame because no, that's the game it's where it's, great it's, it's 17 in a game. Yeah, yeah yeah so what so, about the uh, water splash fine? well that should be you see, it wasn't it, a great game but, but it's but iconic it's the game it's, it's it is the game of, it is actually iconic yeah. it actually is it actually lives if up anybody to is going to tell the story of rugby league that's there is a it. clip of that game going to be in there so games what would you put in Rock's there? drift test yeah so you know pick pick some games we've never heard of like trafford borough versus chorley borough in the in the lancashire cup because that that's got to be it that's an iconic fixture that's got to be it could be in there Doncaster, Doncaster versus Scarborough Pirates. The highest scoring draw uh, is Leeds and Sheffield. It was forty-six all. 
So is that going in there as well? Well, again, you just go, <laughs> depends what you like. Just putting everything in there now. Just, the whole thing will be no, full it's... of random fixtures. <laughs> Wakefield, Huddersfield, Dylan Dale in the Challenge Cup final in 68, semi-final in 68, which if only they'd lost. I think the issue with the 72 World Cup team is not that they are absolutely deserving on merit of their uh, deeds being lionised, but the game that they won the Cup, they actually drew 10-0. So they won it on count back. Does that game go in? Again, does that team go in or was that was that game any good? I know it's been repeated well, since, but everyone remembers Clive Sullivan's try. Obviously. And Mike's Mike Sullivan's try. I said, so now do we Stephen. I said now now we go. So right, we've got we've got games in, we've got teams. Tries. <laughs> so it's a Clive, a Clive, Clive Sullivan's try has to go in, Jonathan yeah. Davis's try. Yeah. Rob Burrows in the grand final. Martin, and that's just, Martin just, a fire who ended up on a statue because of the try. We just have a, a Hall of Fame full of stuff. But we don't actually have a Hall of Fame, so we can do whatever. Well, that's the next thing. We do fi- uh, need yeah. a physical manifestation, which I think they're going to put initially at the Etihad, because they've got space to do that. And should there ever be a museum, there would be a <laughs> portion of it devoted can to we, it. Can we just steal a bit of the National Football Museum? Because we are, you know, we, we, we are cousins. I mean, we don't want to be... For, but for us... Yeah. We don't want to be, be then. We don't want to be at the other one at Twickenham. We don't want to be in that museum. We don't want to be a bit there. But we, the National Football Museum, that, that's, that's, that's us. We're, we're cousins. Uh, World Cup semi, England versus New Zealand. Oh, <sighs> amazing. 1995, Australia, New Zealand at the McAlpine, the extra time one. Yeah, that was sensational. Sensational. But, they, that but was they're foreign. Were they foreign? Are they allowed in? Were you there? No. Oh, I, was was watching, I was watching. On that, that was a... TV. Uh, you you know you you got some hard bitten press guys in that box in 1995. There were some jaws on the I, floor. I was 14, so I wouldn't yes, have been in the press box. But they wouldn't have let me in. I forget. But I forget. well, not in a scarf. No, no. I mean, grey brown shirt with uh, <laughs> British call on it. <laughs> Getting thrown out. Uh, checks bounce back from UK and thumping with win against Poland. Says Tim. Good job, Daryl Paul doesn't coach them, or he would be mourning the busy October period. <laughs> Well, I don't think he was morning on Saturday. I assume he wasn't. I mean, I wasn't there, so I missed all the drama. Uh, Phil says this is games to be in the Hall of Fame. Salford 6, Bramley 6 in the Challenge Cup. A uh, David Watkins drop goal saved us. So they, this is all. This is this is the this is the all alternative. Need, all hall need of to fame. be nominated. Alternative Hall of Fame. We'll take it to the RFL, yeah. saying the logical extension of a team is a game. Yeah, yeah. Here's why. And now here's a try. Yeah. yeah. But you see, if you had a goal the, kick, yeah. Oh, no, was it Martin Hodgson kicked a 70 metre penalty? Well, now we're going to end up with Joe Lydon's drop yeah. goal in there, yeah. aren't we? For, um, yeah. Try assist Hall of Fame, Nathan Collins yeah. from last week. <laughs> so, Hall of Fame is for everything. Every, everyone's in the Hall of Fame. Podcast on. No, no, podcast Hall of Fame. But then, you, you know, why, aren't, why isn't there a coach's Hall of Fame? Mm. You know, should they. Mm. Roy Francis yeah, 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 obviously yeah. has had a, a major impact on coaching, yes. both here and in Australia, yeah. be re recognised. And I know, I don't think it would dilute the Hall of Fame to Not have coaches in there in, in the way that he uh, said before there are other Hall of Fame that stick well, broadcasters they, and whatever. The Aussies are starting to do that, aren't they, with the Dally M Awards? They're now putting in broadcasters and coaches. Oh, and do we? Well, broadcaster. Yeah. Well, rugby league does have a role of honour where some of these people yeah, are no recognised. It's on a board in the yeah. Etihad. So I, I just I'm, administrators. But this is all just celebrating history, isn't it? Yes. This is all ways of celebrating history. Which the is Hall important. of Fame is that, and and it leads back to Max Jowett and his achievement that he created history. That no, he did something that nobody in mm. nearly a hundred and thirty years has ever done on either side of the world. Scored five hundred points in a season. We've got three. Four test matches coming up over the next couple of weeks in this country. So the Hall of... There's no one wheelchair Hall of Fame in the Hall of Fame yet, but there will be in, in the future, I'm yeah. sure there will be. Yeah, it was discussed. Um, so that Nobody's ready yet. So that's something for the future. We may speak to one of them later this week. But in terms of the living men and women who are being inducted, I'm assuming they'll be at the test matches over the next few weeks, so they'll wave to the crowd and You'd hope so. we say, You'd hope we these make... are people in the Hall of yeah, Fame, because yeah. people don't... We need to know well, one people. of them may well be working for the BBC. Well, there you Mr. J. Peacock. Yeah. Not not Robbie Paul. He's not in the Hall of Fame yet. He's probably in Bradford, I assume. But you think so. Do they have one separated in each era of when the club existed? <laughs> are Hunslet the same Hunslet who... They're not, are they? They're not. They're not. They're not. 
old ones like new ones like. The Greyhound Stadium with American football players. <laughs> They're in the Hall of Fame. The American football. The flashy post from, uh, from Old Trafford. If we just spin it really fast. And Wigan. Yeah, they're in the Hall of Fame. Um, what else could we put in, in an Browns. alternative? Alternative Rugby League Hall of Fame. Yeah, great. So Central Park, all the all the old. Yeah. But you didn't just end up with every ground. Tattersfield's in there. Right? Yeah. No, hang on. The McCain Stadium. Well, half that's at Scarborough now. Half that's at Featherstone now. Featherstone the Hall of Fame ground now. Stadium of Chips. I don't know. It's... it's I like it when we talk about history because it's things we can, we can yeah. all reminisce and all these things were great and now all the, all the but things But also, I think you need a context. So, you know, Max Jowett's achievement needs to be put into context. Mm. The context is he's done something that has never been done in the history of the game. It's not, um, you know, sometimes we're, the whole thing about Ryan Hall's the leading try scorer in the Super League year ago. Yep, great achievement. But he's still about 600 behind the guy who's actually... Yeah. Now that uh, it's brilliant, Liam Ma Marshall, brilliant this year. Was it twenty nine tries in twenty nine games? That is phenomenal. Not quite Albert Rosenfeld getting eighty in a season. <laughs> yeah, so I only score eighty tries in this. Hey, when people are saying oh, it's, it's easier for Max Jarrett to score five hundred points because they're playing against plumbers and electricians, what's wrong with being a plumber or electrician? By the way, nothing better than being a broadcaster. But who did it? Who did score eighty tries against West Wales? What's... <laughs> Was everyone rubbish in the old? Well, they, they were, weren't they? Because as we know, old rugby league was rubbish, and today's rugby league is the best rugby league because everything evolves. Which is why tries. history is so important. Eighty tries, yeah, eighty tries in one season. 